Hey, this is Kevin Phillips. In this video, I want to just have a quick look at the Virtual Studio tools that ship with Lightwave. Now, if you're not familiar with what Virtual Studio is, it's this really cool system to interactively uh, control animation and do live uh, performance recording uh, in Lightwave. So think about being able to kind of drive uh, different elements such as uh, characters or cameras or lights through a device such as, uh, I don't know, a Microsoft Connect, a tablet, or in this case, I'm going to be using a Microsoft Sidewinder joystick. Um, basically, any kind of human input device. It's a device that plugs in uh, to our Mac or our PC and lets us talk to it. Okay, so one of the uh, latest things that uh, it's been used for, and this is from NewTek's new Nevron uh, Motion plugin, is the ability to read a Microsoft Connect camera and use that to drive motion capture or even record motion capture in real time directly in Lightwave. Okay, now I don't have this obviously, but I do have the Sidewinder joystick. And I wanna just show you how easy this is to set up. So I've got the camera here and it's a static camera. It's not doing too much, but uh, what I thought might be nice is being able to maybe just rotate this camera around manually. So imagine I'm doing another shot of, I don't know, uh, Avatar, the 8-bit game, and I wanted to do my own virtual cinematography with a joystick, not the most efficient way of doing it. Um, I can use this to do that. So I need to, first of all, tell uh, Lightwave or tell the Virtual Studio that I want it to see and uh, work along with the camera here. So basically I want it to control the camera. So for the camera I'm going to press M for motion options and under the Add Modifier for Motion Modifiers, I'm adding Virtual Studio Trait. Okay, and here you notice that the camera's snapped forward like that. Okay, I'm gonna click this option here, Relative, which will basically make it work in relation to its original position. Okay, so we don't worry about Studio just yet. I'm gonna show you some of the other things that uh, we have in Virtual Studio first. Now, I'm gonna bring up under the Virtual Studio pop-out menu here, the device manager. Now the device manager is basically what is reading the devices attached to the uh, computer here. And if you recall I made these little diagrams of the Microsoft Sidewinder here um, and I've put in things next to things such as uh, value underscore four and then some numbers here. And these are more for a personal guide to how what certain things are doing and what sort of values I'm getting back out of them. Now how did I find this out? Well, I did it via the device manager. Okay, HID device manager is here. Okay, enabled so it can read any interface devices plugged in, so generic ones. And Sidewinder Precision 2 joystick, and they're both enabled. Now you notice down here, when I click on that, I can see all of these names. In this case, you see that value three is this value here. And if I was to grab the joystick and twist the joystick shaft, which is what this does, and twist it to the right, you see it goes to 255. Okay, Now you're probably thinking, well why is that on the left? It's because it's basically based on twist in this direction. So twist in this direction goes towards 255, twist in this direction, which turns it to the left, goes down to zero. Okay, pretty easy. Now I've got the eight buttons here. If I was to click on button two, which you'll see here, notice it's a Boolean, which means one or zero. So button two, let's just do that. Okay, so it's plugged in, the joystick's working. Oh, Studio Live, what happens when I click that? Nothing. Now the reason for that is that I actually haven't told um, this motion modifier that I want any of this to be controlled by anything yet. Okay, so I can click on the Studio button here. Okay, or you can do it from here. So let's click Studio. Okay, Studio is where you set up how certain things control other things. So in this case, Item Motion Camera. This is what we call a Studio Trait. And we want to just set this up. So the rotation of the joystick or I should say the twisting of the joystick shaft from 0 to 255, will rotate this. 
So let's uh, double click on item motion camera to bring up our graph editor. Sorry, our node editor. It's not a graph editor. Um, and what we're going to do is say, well, let's first of all, let's just close some of those. Uh, first of all, we're going to ask um, for the device so I can actually read the values coming in from it. So you'll find this under item info. So there's a node in here called device. Let's double click. Okay, and up here I've got uh, my settings or properties. Okay, if you've never seen this before, it's uh, basically open and closed with this button here. Okay, if this is closed, you have to double click and it brings up that floating panel. I'm doing this just so I can uh, have it pop up when I'm working. So let's go manager name. Well, it's an HID, human interface device, and the device name is a sidewinder. And we've done that. Now it shows us all of our values. Now you notice when I'm rolling my mouse over the over these dots or these outputs, I'm getting a value. Now the reason I can see it here is because I've got this probe tool turned on, which lets us display the value of an output in our uh, graph editor. Oh, sorry, our node editor. I must get that terminology correct one of these days. So we know it's from 0 to 255. Okay, so 0 is going to the left and 255 is going to the right. So let's uh, convert 0 to 255 into a usable value. For that, I'm going to need some mathematics. Okay, we go scalar because it is a value. Yeah, I might turn the probe tool back on so I can see it. Yep, that's the one. And I'm going to use a divide to convert 0 to 255 into a value from 0 to 1.0. So it becomes like a little multiplier. 1.0 means 100%, 0 means 0%. So we just divide it by 255. Okay, go here, and as I twist it to the left, it goes to 0, and as I twist it to the right, it goes to 1. Perfect. Now I want to take that and I want to maybe just kind of convert that into a positive and a negative value so I can work out whether to rotate it left or rotate it right. So I know that uh, going to the left, which will be the negative direction, goes to 0. Okay, and going to the right goes to 1. So if I was just to maybe subtract 0.5 from that, let's go down to a subtract node, and we go result into A, and then we'll say in B minus 0 0.5. Okay, if I rotate to the left, I get 0.5, and I rotate to the right, I get 1.5. Now. I've said negative, subtract a negative number, which is just by adding it. Remember, this is a subtract node, not a add node. That's better. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so plus and minus 0.5. Okay, now I want it to be a value between negative 1 and positive 1. So easiest way to do that is simply to go, what's 0 0.5 times whatever makes 1, times 2. Okay, so there's probably a mathematical relationship in here, but I'm just kind of going through this really quick and kind of keeping it to simple steps. So hopefully if you're not a mathematical type of person, you can kind of follow the general idea about what I'm doing, converting numbers to other numbers. So I'm keeping it pretty simple. So now I've multiplied by 2, okay, I guess from 1 to minus 1. Okay, great. Okay, all I want to do now is I want to add this value to the rotation that the car that the um, sorry that the camera is currently set at. Now I need to be able to read what the camera is currently set at, and to do that I need to say, give me the studio trait. This is the one that I'm currently editing. Give me its current uh, details, and then I can use that to plug it back here and update them. So under item info, we've got studio trait to add that node and we're just going to select the same one we're editing so I can retrieve information from here modify it and then update it in here okay so we just need to add 
that one or minus one degree onto a rotation based on the swivel of our joystick there. So let's have a look. We need some more clever mathematics, I'm sure. Okay, and I'm going to try and keep this fairly straightforward as well. So I need to, for a start, let's just kind of say, well, H, P, and B is rotate, so heading, pitch, and bank. So let's say uh, basically X, Y, and Z, we just think of those as H, P, and B. Let's go vector, and let's say let's blank out the heading. Okay, so where are we? We need to go, for this I'm going to use a multiply, multiply vector. So basically what it does is it multiplies the x, y, and z value here by an x, y, and z value there. Now if I want to blank out the first one, well anything multiplied by zero is zero, so it zeroes it out. Okay, I want to keep these other ones, so let's multiply them by one, so just say number by one is one. Now, well it's 100% of that value, no change. I'm going to then take this new rotation value, which is negative 1 to positive 1. I'm going to turn this into a vector. Okay, so I'm going to turn it into a x, y, z, but making that x, which is what I've zeroed out, whatever that value is. So under tools, we have a make vector. And here we have a result to the x. And by default, these are already set to 0, so it's going to make a a vector that looks like that. And all we need to do is just add these back together. So back to our maths, vector add. So we'll take this one and we'll add it to this one. Then I'm going to feed that straight into rotation. So you can see how this all works. We're taking our value, we're converting it to a value between 1 and negative 1 based on the rotation of that, uh, or the twist of the joystick uh, shaft. Okay, we're turning that into a, a new value. And if we can see that happen in real time by using the probe that shows us what's happening. And we're going to use that to basically control the heading of the camera. Okay, so let's close that. Okay, and I'm going to switch it to live. Okay, when live is turned on, basically means from now on when I twist the joystick it should update. There we go. Okay, so now this is controlled by the joystick live. So I'm basically not recording anything right now because recording you basically just play and then control it and it records it as a what we call a take. So how do we record this? Pretty easy. For a start I'm going to make sure that this trait is armed. So record has got a little red circle on. Okay, so that's this thing here. Switch allow record on. Okay, I'm going to click this option, one shot. What one shot will do is it'll basically record up to the last frame and then stop. Now if you don't have this on, what happens is you push play to record something and as you're doing things, if it hits this point and starts again, it's still recording. So it starts to overwrite what you've done there. So let's click one shot. Okay, move this to one side. Okay, here is my joystick. Yep, so let's start it maybe at here. And let's just record what we're doing. So let's push play and then let's just adjust the joystick left and right. Okay, and we're done. Now with one shot you notice that allow record un, uh, deactivates which is great because we don't want it to start recording again. And if we play it there is our performance from our uh, joystick recorded. Now let's say we didn't like that. Let's say we wanted to try that again. Well this is where we add a new take. Okay, So we can click on this value here under the clapperboard which is a take. Go okay, new take. So new take number two. Okay, let's go allow record. Turn on one shot. Let's try the other way so we can really see the difference. And play. Just do something wacky with that. There we go. Okay, allow record turns itself off. And push play. There we go. There's take number two recorded. 
Now, if you don't like that, the nice thing about this is we just click in here. Sorry, I bring that across. And we're going to take number one, and we can just play that instead. So we can record multiple takes and choose the one we want to use.